Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, we've been involved in this work, I guess, for the last 14 years, providing financial literacy training to college students around the country. And one reason why we started provi providing financial literacy training is that we saw that a lot of students were dropping out of school, or once they finished school, they weren't able to maximize the income generated from their degrees. Uh, so we started presenting financial literacy training uh, back in 2001. Um, now we present uh, different types of seminars. We have a, a credit management, student loan management seminar. We have a personal money management seminar dealing, dealing with all the key components of personal finance. We have an investor education seminar too. Uh, today, we're gonna talk primarily about loans. Uh, we're gonna talk about the loans generated associated with credit card debt as well as student loan debt during the period that we have here. We just split it in half in terms of dealing with uh, loans. Because as we know, um, uh, this is a credit-driven society. At some point in our lives, we've got to deal with credit, right? We're going to split the time that we have to, uh, here between the two subjects. And uh, we now when we talk about credit cards now, I guess some of you do have some credit cards, right? Yeah, okay, let's talk about that. Now, credit cards are open-ended, as you know. As long as you are pay making a payment on time, you can always use the credit card. You use your pay, you use your pay. But you are generating loans because every time you use the credit card to buy the $50 shirt or the $50, $50 blouse, you're borrowing money. It's a loan that has to be repaid, and you're giving up the future use of your money. You know, some people say, well, I have to pay my credit card bills. I have to pay my credit card bills every month. You know, you have to think about that. You are giving up uh, the future use of the money because you are um, acquiring the debt. It is a loan agreement just like any other loan agreement, except this is particularly unique. A lot of loan agreements have a fixed payment period where you pay the debt off, you know, say, within four years and five years. But a credit card, you use it as long as you ha maintain good credit, good relationship with the credit card issuer. I have a credit card uh, that I got back before you all were born, back in 1971. You know, <laughs> so I still have it, you know, because I use it, I pay, I use it, I pay. So you always, and uh, you can always have use of it, okay? Now, there are various, there are five different types of credit cards. And I always tell college students, you'll probably only need one credit card while you're in school. And when you finish school, maybe two, one for your personal use and one for your business use. Now, you have your bank card, it'll be a Visa card or a MasterCard. Um, issued by a bank, a savings loan association, or a credit union. Um, and you can use it you, almost every place you go. And the second type of credit card is the one that creates a lot of problems for a lot of individuals, including students, is a retail credit card. Now, the retail credit card, as you know, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be more expensive. You can only use it at the place where you have that credit card. If you have a Macy's card, you can only use it at Macy's. You can't use it at JCPenney. You can't use it at Nordstrom's. And the rate is higher. So it's always important to think about those um, cards and their limited use and their cost. Their cost is going to be higher. Yes, you always get that, that, that uh, offer being made to you. Open up a credit card today, you get a 10% discount, you know? But if you don't pay it off at the end of the month, you know, that discount, discount that you realize, you know, they recover because the interest rate is going to be very high. So I said shop with the, with the MasterCard or the Visa card, that national card that you have. Plus, it gives you uh, a better uh, impact when, you are c when the credit your credit score is computed. Now, the secure credit card is for those individuals who have damaged their credit in the past or they have um, a damaged, damaged their credit in the past or they are trying to establish credit for the first time. Uh, you had to put a deposit up. It could be $300 or $400. You use it, you pay, you use your pay. And once you demonstrate to the credit card issuer that you're credit worthy, they'll give you a regular credit card. Now, all loans, so like even a credit card loan, a car loan, uh, you buy a mortgage, buy a house, you have a mortgage, make sure you read the terms and conditions because the terms and conditions can create a big problem for you if you don't understand the terms and conditions. As you know, a lot of people lost their homes because they didn't understand the terms and conditions of the mortgages they acquired. They didn't realize the mortgages would be adjusted. They only heard $1,500 a month. They said, wait, I, I pay $1,500 a month for rent. I get a house of $1,500, let me have it, let me sign, you know? But they discovered that two years, three years later, it was gonna be adjusted $2,500 or $3,000, they can afford it. So all loan agreements, make sure you read, understand the terms and conditions. Now, usually I have time to go through, we go through each of these, um, uh, examples here. You go to, I'm sure you have gotten a lot of solicitations and you will get more. Now this is one particular credit card solicitation where the interest rate is 14.24 percent. It also has a provision here that says the penalty APR and when it applies. Uh, it goes to 29.99 percent. If you miss one late payment 
or if you exceed the limit, you have a limit of $1,000, you charge $1,001, it goes to 29.99%. Okay, you're locked there, okay? But this one says that, uh, and I skipped here, it says, but if you pay s make six consecutive payments going forward after it goes to 29.99%, we would take the rate back down to 14.24%. So it gives you a break. You know, say if you had a hiccup in your finances and you had to miss a payment and things got straight, you know, and now you can make payments on time, they'll take the rate down by 14.24%. Point, 14 There's another so solicitation here where the interest rate is 11.99%. Looking at the interest rate sounds better, right? Same situation, uh, pay on the APR when it applies, uh, miss a payment, goes to 29.99%. You exceed the limit, it goes to 29.99%. But you say, how long will the APR apply? If the APR are increased for any of these reasons, the penalty APR will apply indefinitely. Yeah. Okay? And you always want to check your credit report while you're in school because identity theft is a big issue among college students. There's a website, website called www.annualcreditreport.com. www.annualcreditreport.com. Check your credit report every year. If you're about to go in for a job interview, check your credit report before you go in. You know, make sure you understand, you know, see what your situation is. Sometimes there are errors or someone has stolen your identity. You want to get it cleared up, you know, early, as soon as possible. Now, I'm sorry? Now, not free credit report. That's a little guy trying to save your service. But www, <coughs> excuse me, www.andyourcreditreport.com by law. Every American can get a free copy of his credit, credit report. You can pull Asperian, Equifax, TransUnion, or you, you, you can do it three times a year, pull Equifax one quarter, next quarter pull TransUnion. You can do it that way too, you know. Yeah, but that is free, you know. Now, you, they have some service. If you want to have them to compute your credit score, they can do that for a fee, you know, but the credit report is free, okay. Now, most lenders use what is called the FICO score, the FICO score. To, uh, to make a determination about whether or not they're going to make a loan to you. And the FICO score ranges from 300 to 850. The higher your score, the lower the interest rate's going to be on the loan. The lower your score, the higher the interest rate's going to be on the loan if the loan is approved. Now, uh, you'll notice here, the pop our population right now, uh, only 13% of the population has a score of eight, 800 above. You got 750, 750, 799, 27%. Your goal is to try to have a credit score of 750 and above to get the best interest rate on the credit card, the car loan, and on down the line, okay? That's your goal, but try to go on above 800 if you can. But right now, lenders are looking at 750s. Some are dropping, this, dropping it, it'll give you a loan at a lower rate, low, lower, with a lower score, but the interest rate is gonna be higher. You see, that's the dynamic of it. They also have Vantage score here. Uh, this is put together by all the, all the credit reporting agencies, Equifax, TransUnion. And, um, and Asperian. The dynamics are the same, okay, but they give you a grade. 901 to 990 is A, 801 to 900 is B, and 501 to 600 is F. On this scale, you want to have a, a credit score of 801 and above. So it's, it's, it's similar, okay? Now, let's look at the factors. These are the factors, because you can control your own credit score. You can control your own credit score. It's tied to you, like your DNA is tied to you, your credit score is tied to you. Now, the big factor here is your payment history. 35% of your credit score is based on your payment history. Do you pay consistently as agreed? If you can't pay more than the minimum, pay the minimum. You don't pay it consistently because it's 35% of your credit score. Now the interest rate on student loans, say uh, the undergraduate is 3.86. And, um, and you have uh, 8.25 for, uh, for the other, uh, unsubsidized loans too. A graduate, graduate student is 5.41. Now, what's key here is that it used to be a time where when you sign your master promissory note, all the loans coming out of that pr master promissory note would have the same interest rate. Now, the new law says that every year you get a loan, you get a different interest rate based on the market rate, based on what's happening in the market. So right now, this past year is 8.25, 8.25 for undergraduate, uh, a, grad, a graduate uh, federal student loan is 9.5, okay? So next year it could be 8.5 or it could be 10. So it goes, it's gonna go back and forth based on market conditions, based on market conditions. So that's what is happening now. So be aware of that, okay? 
Now, uh, the other thing is we want to be aware also about uh, student loan default. Since the federal government is, is making available all, most of the student loan money now, uh, they're very aggressive in trying to get the money back. They've hired additional lawyers at just department to try to pursue those individuals who default on the student loans. So you want to pay your student loans on, on a timely matter because you can get involved in losing eligibility. They can, they can garnish your wages. Suddenly you think your paycheck, your net pay is going to be $2,500. They give you a check for $1,500. You say, what, what happened? Well, they just garnished my pay uh, for the student loans. And they also have a range of where they can offset um, your income tax refunds. If you, you anticipate a refund of $3,000, suddenly you have, you're in default. They just take a portion of that or take all of it to, to apply against the student loan. And it's damaged your credit, too, and you get involved in litigation. So be aware of student loan defaults. But luckily, uh, based on the information I've seen by Georgetown University, the student loan, def the rate, student loan default rate is not very high. So that's, that's very good. Now, how do you avoid default? How do you, how do you default divide, div uh, avoid default on a student loan? Two things you have at your, uh, two things you have available at your disposal. As soon as you finish school, if you have, do not get a job right away, or if you have an economic hardship, uh, some uh, illness, you can ask for. You can, if you don't get the job, deferment. You want to go deferment. You don't get the deferment. Always, uh, not you get deferment. Now, if you start working and you get laid off become ill or some other, some other incapacity may occur, you call the lender, contact the lender, and you seek forbearance. You say, look, I'm temporarily unemployed, I'm ill, or whatever the case may be. I need to work out another payment arrangement. I need to, or whatever the case may be, is seek, seek forbearance to avoid default. Because if you go past 270 days or nine months without making a payment, you're in default, okay? And it can t you can start taking action against yourself. So you want to contact your lenders right away if you have those situations. I, didn't get it. I don't have a job at this point, so I want to defer my loan, okay? Or I was working, I got laid off, or I became ill, whatever the case may be, I want to seek forbearance. That's those two options you have available to you. Now, um, you notice here, I also show this, but so in terms of, so because you have, you have the potential to make a lot of money. So you got a, say it would be just a bachelor's degree, you got you learn lifetime learning. Well, it's just on average here. Uh, you can make about a million dollars. You got a master's degree. You got a million three. So you're going to have money available to you. So you want to maximize it uh, to get the most out of it. Okay. Now, in terms of loans, um, you have this loan forgiveness program. Uh, a lot of students use this, um, where th the federal government is trying to replace those baby boomers who are retired, those young people like themselves. So what they would do, they'll pay off your student loans up to $60,000. You work for the government for three years, so you get paid, plus you get your student loans paid off. Okay, there are about 33 agencies participated. It was like $10,000 a year. You had to work for at least three years. Um, and sign an agreement with the agency that you can work three years, and the maximum they'll make available is $60,000. Congress is also involved in it. If you have a congressional representative, so that, you know, I'm willing to work for you, they have a program too. So uh, for the same reason. And these agencies, let me see, let's go back here. Now, you got the State Department, you got uh, General Accounting Office, you got the U.S. Department of Education, you got the U.S. Department of uh, Defense, State Department, uh, most of the agencies right here in, in, in D.C. And, and around the country have this program available. So it's a way to, to, um, to help liquidate your student loan indebtedness. Now, you also had a possibility to have your loan forgiven or canceled. Now, if you're going to work in public service, like for the government, public safety, military, emergency management, public service for the elderly, uh, law enforcement, or social work, you know, that's a possibility there. You can get your loans forgiven. It's just canceled. Or you're a math uh, teacher or a uh, foreign language teacher uh, where uh, they're having difficulty getting math teachers in some school districts. You can get your loan forgiven that way, too. Or if you work in a... Um, low to moderate income area, or the area is trying to be rejuvenated. Um, that's a possibility too, or getting rid of, uh, uh, forget getting your loans forgiven. Or, and we hope the last one never occurs that you're totally disabled. Now, you also have another option available to you is to consolidate the loans. So if you got four or five different um, student loans, and you don't want to write, don't want to write five checks 
every month, you can consolidate your loans into one. Okay? This website here, www.loanconsolidation.ed.gov. Now, how do, they, how do they determine the rate? They weight all, they have a weighted average. So one rate on the loan is 4.5%. The other rate could be 8.25%, could be 6.7%. They get a weighted average to determine the interest rate on the consolidated loan. You know, so your average rate could come out to be 6.25%, whatever the case may be. I'm not doing the math, I'm not doing the math in my head right now, but you do, you do work through a, a weighted average to get the rate. So some people do that to avoid having to uh, write five different checks. It helps you with your cash flow, you know, where you know you now rather than writing uh, four $150 checks per month, you know, you maybe just write one at $300 per month, you know, 